Hey guys, it's Bailey from Making Up the Midwest, and this is going to be a Sephora haul. It's actually a really belated Sephora haul. It was all the stuff that I snagged from the VIB sale, and so in addition to their kind of shipping issues that they had and the way that I like to do hauls, which if you have been watching me for a while, you'll know that I kind of like to give this two-in-one review haul. That way it's the excitement of a haul, but you also get something a little more meaningful as far as what I have to say about each of the products. Between those two things, it took me a while to get through that stuff and create this video, but I'm very excited to do so because there's some interesting products here. So with all that being said, let's just hop right into it. First things first, I want to talk about a fragrance. And this is something that I know I've talked about on the blog before, but I'm not sure if I've mentioned here, maybe in a favorites video. Either way, it's actually been a long time favorite and I'm upgrading from a 100 point perk size, which was something like, eh, yay big, yay wide, very, very tiny. I actually upgraded to the full size because I love this scent that much. This is Nest's uh, Midnight Fleur. And this is my first Nest fragrance. I've heard a lot about them, but never had actually tried them until that 100 point perk. So this is a mix of sweet and savory scents. I tend to prefer really sultry base notes of amber and woodsy, but I do like a sweet top note. And so that's exactly what this is. In fact, if I'm gonna read from the website, it actually says exotic woods, black amber, patchouli, night blooming jasmine, and vanilla orchid. It's just right at my alley and sure enough, what I find when I spritz this on all my, you know, scent points, wrists, behind the ears, all that jazz, I find that the deep, sultry, uh, woodsy scents tend to fade away first, but at the end of the day, I can still smell the sweeter scents. And first off, I have kind of an issue with scents lasting on me. I think quite a few people do. This is one that lasts on me. While not the entire scent does, I do like that at the end of the day, it's kind of the sweet top notes that are lingering around and it's just like a, a fresh, a refreshing waft of scent, I guess, if that makes any sense. It is what it is. I love this scent, and so I had to upgrade to the full size in the end. Next, moving on to makeup, let's talk bases. I have a foundation and a concealer, and these I'm sorry to say, are actually kind of disappointing products. They're from the Marc Jacobs line, which I totally expected, you know, to fall in love with them. In fact, I'm, I purchased them in the hopes of falling in love with them because I really want to make kind of a top five or a top 10 luxury products because there are definitely items out there that are worth the splurge, really hoping to find them and share them. These are not them. So right off the bat, I wanna talk about the foundation. This is the Marvelous Mousse Foundation and I picked the shade Ivory. I wanna say that part of the reason I don't like this is because this shade is just too light for me. I was picking from online and of course, everyone's lightened up by this time in the year. And so I just estimated too low. This is a little light for me. It's a little pink for me. I'm kind of a standard like middle of the road neutral skin tone. That was the first problem. The next problem, however, is in store. I tried, I didn't try it on in store, but I did touch the foundation in store when I first saw it and it first came out, and I love the texture. It does say it's a marvelous mousse foundation. It promises full coverage and a rich, creamy texture. Right off the bat, that's just not what I experienced. It has kind of a thicker consistency when you apply it, and it definitely has a cream to powder consistency, but I don't find it's full coverage. I find it clings really easily to dry spots, which means that mature skin is gonna have kind of an issue with this if they lean towards a drier skin type, as many do. And you can see in the before and afters here, it's obviously too light. It's definitely lighter than, than what you'll see me wearing right now. But beyond just it being too light, it definitely, I, I feel like it covers my complexion unevenly and it doesn't wear that well throughout the day between the before and after. I found it really wore away in my problem areas because I have combination skin. So I have an oily T-zone. It wore away in my chin area, my nose area, and in my under eye area. And given it is winter, I personally have a drier skin type in general. So things are going to cling in different places now, as opposed to in summer when I'm more moisturized, more hydrated, all that kind of stuff. So I definitely am going to keep this around in the hopes that it can change my mind. And it's just ultimately an awesome summer foundation. But for now, what I found is that it really just doesn't live up to this luxurious, transforming mousse foundation that it promises. It is more so kind of a powdery mess on me. So that is the mousse foundation. I also splurged on the Remarkable Full Cover Concealer. Now this wasn't as much of a disappointment. It too, however, is a little bit light for me. I'm currently wearing it in my under eye area. It's very, very creamy. It has a little bit of a thinner consistency than I expected, but it is still very creamy. It's very easy to dab comfortably on your under eye area without feeling like you're tugging, which is an 
absolute no-no for that area. I definitely do find that I need to set it with a powder, which is pretty typical of any concealer personally for me. My real complaint here really is with the coverage. You call something remarkable to me, it's going to have flawless foundation. In fact, it really has, has to kind of stand up to my what's becoming my Holy Grail concealer, which is my IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Waterproof Concealer. Absolutely love it. It too has to be set with powder, but for the coverage it provides, it's absolutely worth it. This needs to be set with powder to stay in place throughout the day, not melt, not crease, and it still doesn't really give me the coverage I want, so remarkable, not so much. I would love to hear if you guys have differing opinions on both of these products. In fact, the concealer and the foundation, maybe I'm using them wrong, um, maybe they truly are meant for a different season, different skin type. You tell me, I'd love to hear it because I'd love to make these products work for me. I had such high hopes for them, unfortunately, not so much. But moving Moving on to products that I definitely had great experiences with, their eyeshadows, of course. The first of the palettes is one that I have been coveting for a very long time, and so when the VIB sale popped up, I found it was the perfect opportunity. It is the Kat Von D Monarch Eyeshadow Palette, and a lot of you guys probably already own this. I am late to this palette party, but like I said, been coveting it for a while had to have it. Look at this baby. It is all kinds of neutrals in here and don't let this orange throw you. I personally tend to gravitate towards warmer colors even though my complexion most of the time can't carry them. There are still a ton of other fantastic neutrals in here. Even some cooler leaning silvery kind of gunmetal grays that are absolutely beautiful and the pigmentation is insane. I personally think that's what Kat Von D is known for. I've had a few of her palettes here in the past. A lot of them are more uh, colorful than this. I had a purple, I think it was the Beethoven, something like that. Her original series of palettes knew that I had to have this one given the quality that I experienced there, and this did not disappoint. These are so smooth, so buttery, so pigmented. I mean, one swipe, like, so what? That is just, I mean, these are absolutely insane. You'll see close-up swatches here, but I just wanted to just see in person how richly pigmented and buttery these shadows are. I'm actually wearing these on my eyes today. That one that I just swatched on my middle finger is all over the moving part of my lid and then I'm using a few of these neutrals over here to deepen up my crease and all that jazz. I probably won't do a full review of this palette unless you guys absolutely want it because it is, it has been out there for a while. It is a permanent fixture in her collection but what I hope to do with this palette is more tutorials because I do find that while there are some intense metallic shades in here, for the most part it's a pretty wearable color palette, which means there are some great day to night opportunities I see in here. So hopefully that will come in the future. Beyond that, I would love to know if you guys want to see a full review. I feel like I pretty much gave it a, a glowing review as it is. Just if you want more details, let me know in the comments below. The other palette that I hopped into is actually brand new and I will have a separate video of this out because I want to compare it to other palettes within the line, you'll soon understand once I show it to you. It is the Smashbox Double Exposure Palette. Now they have the Full Exposure, they have the Full Exposure Mini Palette, both of which I reviewed and compared together. This is kind of a third palette in the series, and I think they call it Double Exposure because all of these shadows are meant to be used both wet and dry. Same name of the game here where you get 14 eyeshadows, a dual-ended eyeshadow brush, although this is a different brush than you receive in the full exposure palette, and then you also get a uh, travel, in fact this is it, it's a travel sized full exposure mascara. This is what I'm wearing on my lashes right now. So I have not only swatched this, but I've had a, I took this traveling with me over Thanksgiving. And so I've had lots of opportunities to use it both wet and dry. And I have to say, I think they were very clever with the way they formulated these eyeshadows because not only does naturally when you foil an eyeshadow or you use a mixing medium or water to wet it and then apply it, it's going to intensify the pigment. But with the kind of pigments they have in some of these eyeshadows, it completely transforms the pigment when you wet it. Some of these go from being very nice, natural, shimmery shades that make a great daytime inner corner shadow, and then you wet them and they kind of take on this dual chrome quality and their, their pigment intensifies and it's really, I just think it's an awesome palette, which spoiler alert if you wanted to see the review, but there will be a comparison in that video as well. I love this palette. I, I really do think it's awesome. You get a nice big mirror up here, and the color selection is totally different than what you will see in the original Full Exposure palette and the mini palette, which were very similar. This is entirely different, and unlike those two palettes, the finishes aren't separated like those were. In the originals, it was all shimmery, borderline glittery, sparkly shadows on top, and then all mattes on the bottom. 
This is a full-fledged mix. You have some iridescent, some shimmery, some matte, all of which transform when you use them wet. And so it makes for a nice solid mix that I don't think is gonna intimidate too many people with the finishes, whereas the other palettes had some serious glitter and so some people were immediately turned off by it and they were like, I'm never gonna wear those glittery shades. This is a little bit more toned down in terms of finish, but a little bit bolder in terms of the shade selection. So obviously I do think that you can own both the full exposure and the double exposure and definitely not overlap in the shades, long story short, but I really do recommend recommend the double exposure because it is a much more versatile palette. Oh, that being said though, the one thing I do want to mention with this palette is it is more expensive the than the original full exposure palettes, and I'm not sure if it's because of the transformative ability, but it's the fact no matter what. So just something to be aware of when you are purchasing this is don't be surprised when you see a little bit of a price hike because while that palette still is 49, this is 52. And the last set of products in a haul that I feel like has gone on for forever is the Kat Von D eyeliner set. This is her holiday set. And I've been really wanting to try some of her eyeliners. I tried one way back when she first came out with her entire line at Sephora, but I wanted to get a more solid sampling of the entire line to see one if the formula had changed and two if there are any variations amongst the shades within the eyeshadow or eyeliner formula. For $32 you get a set of eight miniature size or travel size versions of her autograph eyeliner pencils and none of the shades get too wild and crazy in here. I'd say the biggest deviation is the finish. You have anything from matte to metallic to shimmery. That's more so what you get to play with in the shades. I'd say the brightest it gets is this green shade here, which is super pigmented. I mean, no surprise coming from Kat Von D. And that shade is Eyegasm. All of these are very smooth and creamy. They don't tug at all on your lash line when you go to apply it and they smudge out really nicely before they dry down. You have a little bit of time to play with them. They obviously have some great pigmentation, although I do find that with some of the metallic shades, um, and with any kind of metallic pencil, really, it's not just Kat Von D's, it's any metallic pencil, it kind of the, the finish takes away from the intensity, so I find that I really have to layer up in order to get the sort of intensity that I want. That says less about this particular formula and more about the finish, I think, but just something to be aware of if you're looking for eight super bold eyeliner shades. That's not necessarily what all of these are, so you have to appreciate them for the finishes that you are given in this set. But beyond that, I do think this is a great little sampling of eyeliners, and I personally find it hard to go through full-size eyeliners unless it's a staple color like a black or a brown. So to get these sort of fun little mini travel size colors, I feel a little less wasteful and you still get some room to play at a really reasonable price. I really hope you guys enjoyed that and I'd love to hear what you guys have been hauling recently, whether it's from Sephora or at this point, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that great stuff. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.